we're getting ready to do the stairs. I don't have a lot of room. I've got this laid out on some butcher paper that I just taped, well, stapled it and taped it together so it wouldn't get scooted around, stapled it to the floor. I've got each step laid out. Now this set of stairs will come up this way. Then you'll turn. You want to bump you into the wall. And we'll go on up to the top of the floor, which will be right here. Now to do these, what I did, I dropped a plumb bob, this floor joist, this beam, and I got a line on the floor. And that's what I had to start from and work from this point back to the wall. What I'll actually, my starting point will be step number five, and then I'll build what it'll actually be will be a platform that is at the height of this fifth step, and then I'll make a triangular piece for the sixth step and set on top of that. And then the seventh step will be another platform. I've got it marked on the wall right there, and then the eighth step. We'll set on top of that platform and then the other stringers that will be cut out for the steps will come on up to the, the floor joist beam. Now I have this marked at this point. This will be the height of the fifth step. I'll build the platform that high and then I'll build the sixth step off of that. And I'm, the other platform will be this height, the seventh step, and then the eighth step will set on top of that. This may sound a little bit complicated, but we're going to do everything we can to make it work. I've got the first stand put together. This is just some uh, rough sawn two befores that I saw it on the sawmill. And I came up at this height, as I've mentioned before, it's the fifth step or the fifth rise. And when I framed this, I kept the top of this down an inch and a half, which will be what we put back on top of this uh, for this, what you're actually standing on. If you look here, I've got, this is just a, a check piece of the first four steps, and I cut that first inch and a half off of the very bottom of this, I'll call it the stringer, it's not going to be used, it's just a woman 12, but I was just laying it out to make sure that I had everything the way I wanted it. And that will keep all of my steps at seven and five eighths. Now, as, as I told you when I built the porch steps, whatever you're going to put on top of the step is what you take off of the bottom of that first, or the stringer, so that everything stays the same all the way up. So I've, I've got this. It's at 36 and 5 eighths. I'll come back on top of this with a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood, and then on top of that with some 3 quarter inch red cedar. And this is just framed, uh, just very simple framing. I just used uh, three inch torque screws and screwed it to the logs. Now you may think, well, the logs have got to settle. Well, at this point, these logs have already settled. It takes about a year for that to take place. We've had other things going. This cabin's not the only thing we've been doing, but the logs are settled. We're, we're good to chink. Actually, you can see some insulation in here. Now, this was going to be an exterior wall, but when we decided to add the kitchen on, it is really uh, an interior wall, but we put some insulation in there. You can see it here behind me. But on the stairs, I've got this first one built. I'll step over and I'll build this other one, which will be at the seventh step where my finger is, and I'll bring my framing this part right here, up to this line, and then I'll, I'll floor it with a three quarter inch plywood also. So what I'm doing first, I've got a, two plates here that I'm putting on the floor. I'm just leaving this paper on here. It always gives me a reference, and I can just work from the lines on the paper. And when I get this done, I can just cut that paper out from around the plates. But I'm going to uh, anchor these down. Make sure I'm on the line.
measuring off the top of that plate up to my line then I'll take that number and whatever the width of my band that I put across here I'll cut my my little stud that much shorter See right here I've put in some extra wood there that little pencil line right there will be where the tops of the stringers go and I'll cut a block and attach it right here that'll go in between them to give it a little bit more stability after this angled uh, step goes on then I'll be able to hook the bottom side of the stringers that go up there I'll be able to hook it at the bottom on this next step that goes up. And I probably will have to put something underneath it, nip the point off of the bottom side of the stringer and put a, a block underneath it here. Well, it'll actually be up here to uh, help hold it up. All right, I've got the, uh, the platforms built for step uh, five and step seven. I've got everything pretty much ready to go to build or to cut out the stringers and put them up and put the plywood on on the, the tops of these. I've got a little joist that I cut to go in between. Oh, you can't see it from there. I've got one here and up here also. And I've got it where it's pretty secure. I don't think it's gonna fall, at least I hope it don't. But I'm ready now to cut all the stringers, put the plywood on the top, make these little angle steps here and here and we'll be able to go up to the to the loft without getting on a ladder i've got the plywood on the first landing which is actually step number five and i laid this out you can see some some lines across here for step number six i've already anchored the plywood down i've got it screwed down and i'll set this framing of this number six step I've already got it cut. Now what I had to do, since this is not a 24 inch square, it's actually 28 inches from this point to here. It is 24 inches wide. So I had to draw out my step number six and figure out the angles. And what I did, I just took a piece of two by and laid up there in the corner and just drew it on this plywood and I was able to figure out the angles that I needed for uh, each corner. So I've got this made and I've got it put together and I'll set it up here. All right, I have my framing in here for the step number six. I'm gonna see if I can get that out and show you what it looks like. It's just uh, some lumber that I had sawed out on, on our sawmill and I had to cut everything at the, at the right angle. This angle here was actually a 49 degree angle. And I really couldn't cut that with my skill saw, but my miter saw will cut up to 60 degrees on the right side and 50 degrees on the left side. So I thought, you know, I could rig up and cut this with a chainsaw, which I have done that before, but I would be in and out, in and out, in and out. And I thought I would just, uh, make this actually in two separate pieces. You can see a, a wider piece and a narrow piece here and, and just screw them together. And I could, I could make all my cuts on the miter saw. So I've got this ready to anchor down and put my plywood right on the top. There's something that I need to show you when you're building stairs like this or similar to this. And you have to start at one point here and one point here and work up and work down. You have to really keep up with your numbers. It's, uh, it's critical that you do this. Now, I have a piece of three-quarter inch plywood on top of this first uh, landing framing. And then I have just the framing for step number six. Now... I have to keep in mind that I'm gonna be putting plywood, three quarter inch plywood on top, and then a three quarter inch piece of cedar on top of that. 
So I, I can't measure from here to the top of the plywood because that will throw my step off. I've got to go back to my framing, which is at this point right here below the plywood. And my steps were seven and five eighths of an inch in the rise. So from here to the top of the framing itself, I have to have seven and five eighths. So that leaves my framing here at six and seven eighths. So when I put the plywood back on top here, I will have the seven and five eighths from the top of the plywood to the top of the plywood. And then when I put the cedar on this and on this, I'll still keep my seven and five eighths. That's something that you have to, to really watch. And you can get a little bit confusing, but once you figure out that you're adding two the same amount to the top of each step, and you take that same amount off of your very first step at the bottom, things will probably work out for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this anchor down, get the plywood on here, and get this step here on, and get the plywood on it, and then I can finish that out, all the, the, uh, the framing part. Cut out my, my stringers, it goes from here to the loft, and my stringers that goes from here to the floor. I don't think that's going to go anywhere yet. Get a couple on the other side there. I'm ready to go up and ready to go down. Or maybe I'll go up first and up some more. I've got the first stringer cut here, my first four steps up to the, the landing that I built, which would be step number five. And I'll take this and use it as a pattern. And I have showed you this before when I was doing the steps for the front porch. I'll do the same thing here. I'll clamp it to the board that I'll use for my other stringer here. And I'll line it up on the bottom side of the next board and mark it out using this as my pattern. Now, when I put this on here, I made sure that I crowned my stringer. There's just a very, very slight crown on this side and I wanted the, the crown to be up. It's always good to do that because if it ever moves, it's, it will go down, but it won't ever come up. So it's always good to make sure that you crown each of your stringers before you cut them. So I've got this laid out and I can cut this one and I'll have the, the first set of stringers. There'll only be two and I'll, I'll beef them up a little bit. I won't just depend on the plywood to span uh, nearly two feet. I'll, I'll put some extra bracing in there. Okay, there's something that I wanted to point out again this would be the, the bottom of the stringer right here at this point. And this is seven and five eighths, which is what each rise will be. And since I'm going to come back and put two layers of three quarter of an inch on top, I need to take that much off the very bottom of the stringer. So I've got this marked. I'll be taking the inch and a half off. So this will actually be my cut line right there. And then when, like I say, I'll come back and I'll add back up on the top of each one of these. When I cut these cutouts for the steps, on the pattern, I cut right, right close to the line. 
And when I make my second stringer or third or fourth or however many I have to have, and I mark them, I'm marking on the outside of what would the actual step and rise be. So when I start on the second, third, fourth, however many, I make sure that I cut just the line out when I mark it on another piece. And that keeps your stringers pretty close to all being the same. I've got my first set of stringers in and screwed to the floor and I put a block in between here. This is anchored to the corner stud in the platform. I put this block in there so that I could anchor this one not only to the to the little two before here on the platform but also I could screw into this block right here. As you can see I'm putting some blocks in here. There will be a three-quarter inch piece of uh, red cedar that will make a riser to cover this area up. And since I am using uh, three-quarter inch plywood for my first part of the step, I guess you could say, I wanted to have something a little more secure since these uh, stringers are two feet apart. And I can set my plywood on top of these and screw it down, and that'll make it a whole lot stronger. I, I put this first up uh, block in here. My stringer here had a little bit of a bow in, and I just took my, my four foot level, and I figured out how much longer I needed to make this to make this all run straight. I'll go ahead and I'll finish putting these blocks in. And then I can come back and put the pieces of plywood on top of this and have a solid step. That would be a pretty good jump. I guess I'll just put up a couple more stringers because I ain't going to jump that far. So far that's pretty comfortable. I've started cutting the stringers that go from the, the top of the last step there all the way up to the loft. And what I did, I made a template and then laid the template on top of this 2 by 12 before I cut it out. This is my pattern that I made for the other side. It's laid out with the steps on there, what would be cut out and it is notched to go underneath the joist that line out there to the point i will cut off and this area across here i will fill in and anchor the stringers to that this line right here will be what i cut all the way down that would be the end of the stringer which will set against this step number eight and will rest on top of the of this block right here so now I can take this pattern off and make the cuts on it that I need to and set it on my 2 by 12 and lay it out. Okay, I've taken my, my pattern down on the other stringer and I've got it laid on top of my 2 by 12 and all I did was mark the ends where I had to fit it up against the, the floor joist beam and down at the bottom where it, it butts into the eighth step. And I've already, since I've got it marked, I went ahead and did my layout with my square with the stair stair gauges on it. So I now I'm ready to cut this out and set it up there. I'm going to get rid of some of this excess length here just to make it a little easier to handle. We've got the top set of stringers that go on up to the loft. We've got them in, they're anchored, and I did the same framing that I did on the set of steps down here. You can see the, the two before showing right there so that I could have the backing that I need for the risers and with the two befores going crossways, it makes it a lot stronger just using the plywood across there because it's sitting on top of them and 
would be pretty strong. Now, back here, I had to screw some boards to the bottom side of the floor joist, and then we anchored top side of the stringer to that. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it's all I could do because of the of lack of room that I had to get another step up there. We've got our plywood cut and stacked right there, ready to screw on, and then we can very comfortably go up and down these stairs.